Hello everyone, my name is Leno and I will be presenting our joint work developed at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Our main objective in our work is to solve symbolic optimization problems. Those types of problems can be seen as a discrete sequence optimization, where we have to optimize a sequence of discrete tokens under a black box reward function. This basically means that we have for uh, each possible token sequence that we have, this token sequence is related to a reward signal. And what we, we try to do is sampling new token sequences uh, from a given token library. And we have to find the token sequence that optimizes this reward function. Uh, in principle, this uh, token sequence can have arbitrary length. So it's a search problem in which you have to search a huge uh, search space of token sequences and find the one that optimizes the reward. This way of modeling problems is very useful and very appropriate for solving a lot of uh, reward and challenging problems. Some examples are neural architecture search in which you can describe hyperparameters of the neural network as tokens. And then you have to find the hyperparameters that optimize the performance in a given, uh, in a given task. Uh, other examples will be explored during this presentation, such as antibody design, in which you have to find an antibody that better uh, neutralizes a given biological threat, and symbolic regression that you have to find an equation that better, that best fits some available data that you have from some, uh, for example, natural experiment. Our starting point is the deep symbolic optimization algorithm. Uh, that is part of the state-of-the-art in symbolic optimization. This approach uses as an RNN to sample tokens sequentially uh, to optimize a given task. So for example, let's assume here that we have a library uh, based in the symbolic regression task. So each of the tokens in the library represent either a mathematical uh, operation or uh, a, a parameter to those operations. And we start by sampling from the RNN uh, tokens according to a categorical distribution learned by the network. So we start by sampling the first token. Let's say that we have sampled the division token. This division token will start to define a, a token tree that you can see in the right side. And this will be the argument for the next, to the next token to be sampled. So we have uh, now a view of the token tree that is represented by the parent and sibling tokens that you can see in the, in the middle of the RNN. And this will define a categorical distribution and then we sample the next token. And we continue sampling sequentially those tokens until we have a complete token tree as you can see in the right uh, side. Uh, and if we read this token tree in a depth first search way, as you can see the numbers uh, in the tree, we can realize that this tree, this token tree corresponds to a, a mathematical expression. So what is sampled by the RNN can be converted into a mathematical expression and this mathematical expression can be evaluated according to a reward that tells you how, how good this expression fits the data that you are trying to analyze. So this is the way we can use deep symbolic optimization to solve a symbolic regression problem and in general, any symbolic optimization problems in which the solutions can be described as a token tree. Another application that we have explored, and actually the one that has motivated this work, is the antibody development problem. Antibodies bind to a specific pathogen, and they are the, the defense of our bodies to fight uh, pathogens that are invading our body. So for example, imagine that we have an antibody that is already uh, identified, potentially manufacturable, that is able to bind and neutralize SARS-CoV-1. When SARS-CoV-2 showed up, it has suffered several mutations from uh, SARS-CoV-1. So because of that, it's different enough that the antibody is not able to bind anymore 
and fight the disease. So this antibody has to be re-engineered uh, so it works for uh, the new pathogen. However, the optimization does not have to be performed from scratch because this, uh, this new pathogen, the SARS-CoV-2, it's very similar to SARS-CoV-1 that we already have the antibody that works for it. So instead of uh, generating the whole antibody from scratch, we just have to uh, sample a new CGR, which is a specific section of the antibody that is uh, responsible to binding with pathogens. And the CGR can be described as a sequence of amino acids. And it's already like common for uh, the biology literature to describe the amino acids as letters. So we can have a sequence of letters, for example, this one, that represents a given CGR. So the problem that we have to solve pretty much means that we start by an antibody that we believe it's similar to the one that will uh, neutralize the new pathogen. We use DSO to sample some mutations and this uh, antibody that will change it a little bit uh, in the CGR. And then the optimal token sequence will define some mutations that we have performed in the antibody. And hopefully the antibody will be able to neutralize the new threat. However, there is an issue related to that. For uh, any single pathogen that we want to develop antibody for, or in general, each new specific symbolic optimization task that we have to solve, we have to solve the problems from scratch. So there are data sets of human antibodies and like how they look like, but it's not trivial to integrate them into the optimization because the data sets tell us how the antibodies usually look like, but they don't tell us how good they are for neutralizing a specific pathogen. So how can we leverage this knowledge from those data sets to help our optimization problem? So then thinking on this problem, we came to the main insight of this paper is that NLP models, they handle tokens very similarly as DSO or as in general, any symbolic optimization algorithm. And LLP also has a very long tradition in learn embeddings that are reusable. So you can, for example, learn a uh, BERT model for a given task, and then you change a little bit of the architecture, change some like layers, and then you can reuse the same model without having to train it over again for a, a completely different task, as long as it is uh, related to uh, the same language on the same uh, type of text. And this is great and this is kind of what we are looking for here. So how can we leverage this kind of like tradition of NLP to support our uh, search in the symbolic optimization problems? And uh, the, solu the solution that we proposed to this problem is called language model accelerated deep symbolic optimization. And the way it works, it basically we train a language model in a data set of uh, real-world solutions to the problem uh, we are looking at. And the language model learns the language of the problem. So for example, for the antibody problem, the language model will learn how the human antibodies look like, how the amino acids interact with each other. So we can learn embeddings from uh, those, those antibodies to reuse those representations. Uh, however, this is not enough to solve the problem itself. So we combine this with uh, DSO. And the way we do it, we have the hierarchical observations that are the token trees as described in the previous slides. And we concatenate those with the embeddings that are learned from the language model. And those, those two, informations are used in the RNN and the RNN will sample new tokens using the token tree that they have sampled so far and also using the knowledge that comes from the language model embeddings. And this will help us uh, to learn faster and hopefully better as well for a wild variety of uh, applications in which we have some data sets of example of solutions for. 
So our experimental evaluation was, was carried out in, in two different domains. The first one is the symbolic regression, that we have some data describing some kind of like physical experiment, for example, and this data has, we have to find an equation that, that best fits this data. The language model that we, we have used is a simple RNN trained to predict the next token. And we gather the data from Wikipedia. Basically, we evaluate all the Wikipedia pages. We look for equations inside the, uh, the pages and we use those equations as an example of real world uh, equations to train the language model. We also evaluate in the antibody optimization that works as, as I have described. And the language model that we use is a BERT inspired language model uh, that is trained on a database of real human antibody sequences. So uh, those are the results for the symbolic regression problem. And by comparing the, the performance in time of like training time and also performance of the, of the recovery of the mathematical formulas, using the language model was better in eight of the 12 tasks. And for the ones that it was not better, we have one tie. And by inspecting the cases in which it was worse, um, mainly most of the cases were because the expression that we are we were trying to recover from our benchmark uh, was an expression that doesn't really look very very much like the real world expressions that were on Wikipedia. So it's kind of like it was a degradation of the performance due to the low performance of the language model. And another effect that we could observe in pretty much uh, most of the experiments in which our uh, model performed better is that uh, LADSO accelerated the uh, the learning speed so you can see in the left graphs in which we have the best sequence found so far uh, our proposal is able to learn the best sequence very quickly and much faster than the baseline and also the average uh, quality of the samples for each of the batches is better as we can see and in the right uh, graphs and this helped the the learning agent to learn faster for the antibody optimization, we trained uh, the model in three different antibodies that neutralize SARS-CoV-1 and then optimize them to try to neutralize SARS-CoV-2. And then the qualities that we are seeing here, seeing here is the binding in score. That means how good the antibody is to uh, find and, neut and neutralize the SARS-CoV-2 viruses. And what we can see is that our approach enabled us to learn much faster in, in, in both of the metrics that we evaluate, the one that is the best sequence found so far, and the average quality of the sampled uh, sequences in each of the learning batches, we performed better and were able to learn faster. So it was an even more positive result than in the symbolic regression domain. So as a conclusion, we have proposed the language um, model accelerated GIP symbolic optimization. It is a method that leverages language model to learn useful representations and then reuse them in symbolic optimization problems. We have shown in two very challenging real world domains that using LA DSO presents advantages and enables us to learn faster in those very challenging real world domains. So we have um, some further uh, work to improve in our proposal. We are exploring transfer learning method methods to reuse uh, knowledge across different symbolic optimization tasks. And we are uh, exploring ways to further refine the language model after we start learning the symbolic optimization task instead of uh, having a pre-training pre phase and then just using this language model.